Among their other conclusions, the authors say that their results suggest that uh, resistance training may be superior to endurance training as resistance training reduced pericardial adipose tissue and improved fitness and strength, while ET just improved, endurance training just improved fitness. And obviously, it's my bias to agree. Yes. And I think that that conclusion is probably totally correct, totally supported, and totally not proven by this study. Right. <laughs> okay, so moving along. Next one is mine. Uh, we're going to do Christensen et al. Uh, yes, all right. This, is, this is a fun one. Effect yeah. of aerobic and resistance exercise on cardiac adipose tissues. This is JAMA, uh, Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA Cardiology, 2019, so fairly recent. Mm -hmm. uh, the authors uh, begin by noting that visceral fat in general and pericardial fat in particular are associated with metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. Absolutely. Uh, they wanted to see the impact of 12-week resistance and endurance conditioning programs on epicardial and pericardial fat mass um, in uh, obese adults. Uh, without documented problems with cardiac function. So these were not heart patients. It's a right. post hoc analysis, the important, a post hoc analysis of a larger study, a different study that was not designed with these questions or endpoints in mind. In other words, this was double dipping, right? right. Beta mining, <laughs> or as the authors delicately referred to it, an exploratory study, right? <laughs> um, 50 men, no women. Uh, were randomized, again, as part of the larger study, to five groups, of which three were used for this study. A conditioning group, a strength training group, and a no exercise group. The exercise groups got 12 weeks of supervised training. Uh, there were some exclusions and dropouts, because there always are, and they ended up with 39 subjects. Uh, there's a nice concert diagram, flow diagram, and paper documenting all of this. Pre- and post-testing of all the outcome parameters, of course, including uh, serum analysis of biomarkers, tests of VO2 max and one rep max bench and leg extension strength, and MRI, uh, pericardial and epicardial fat mass, and cardio uh, cardiac hemodynamics, left ventricular ejection fraction, diastolic volume, all that stuff, blood pressure, you name it. But the primary endpoints appear to be heart fat, strength, and conditioning. Okay, so what did they find? Both forms of exercise decrease epicardial fat, which is the fat that lies directly on the surface of the heart and may be cardioprotective to a point beyond which it isn't. Uh, only resistance training decreased pericardial fat, which is the fat that deposits on the serosal membrane or sac that surrounds the heart and which is clearly associated with risk. There was no effect of what the authors call aerobic training on this pericardial fat mass. Both interventions improved fitness, so at least they were doing something right, with a similar right. VO2 max, interesting, but only resistance training improved strength. No surprise there. Other parameters like biomarkers and hemodynamics were not different to a clinically relevant degree between the groups. So an interesting study, but there are issues. Mm. This is a post hoc data mining paper. Basically, they took their data set from another study and sliced it, you know, along another axis to get another publication. And I get that, but it means that the study was not initially designed to answer these questions. Right. For example, one artifact of this is that all three groups were on a placebo because the original study looked at pharmacological intervention. Right. So basically, you had three groups, including the control group, on a sugar pill plus or minus exercise. So is that important? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the conditioning, the HIT intervention is poorly described, except to say that it was done on an ergometer. So it sounds like some sort of wind gate or something like that, uh, uh, like a Gibala kind of thing. But right. it's important to note that this means that both the resistance and the endurance training were at the high power anaerobic end of the energy spectrum. There was no true aerobic training right. here. There's no power analysis for the study, shame on you, JAMA. So there may be differences that could not be detected. 
and there are no patient oriented outcomes aside from strength there's no poos right mm -hmm. aside from uh, uh, aside from strength and fitness patients you know they don't care about their left ventricular end diastolic volume or their <laughs> CRP. they you know, they don't care uh, among and, and they may be right not to care right uh, among their other conclusions, the authors say that their results suggest that uh, resistance training may be superior to endurance training as resistance training reduced pericardial adipose tissue and improved fitness and strength, while ET just improved, endurance training just improved fitness. And obviously, it's my bias to agree. Yes. And I think that that conclusion is probably totally correct, totally supported, and totally not proven by this study, right. which is too preliminary, too exploratory, and it's too lacking in patient-oriented outcomes, too lacking in power, and too lacking in longitudinal depth uh, to be dispositive on that issue. But still, it's, it's a data point, one along a mountain of data points and papers and clinical experience that tell us that this is the case. Right. So the real take home for most of our listeners is that we have data in agreement, in agreement with other data in the literature that Resistance training reduces visceral fat, um, which is a good thing. Right. Yeah. I know they did. They threw it out in there somewhere when one of the axes of the MRI may miss some fat because they just kept at the ventricle. So, right. but I, you know, I guess that's because they didn't plan on doing it in the first place. <laughs> they just found it out later. Right. So, okay. Anything else on that one for us? No, Brad? no. Okay. I think, you know, like you said, take, take the good news out of it. Visceral fat decreasing with strength training. We'll take that. Yeah, I'll take so, that. All I'll right. take that. And, and, and that just that puts it in line, again, with a bunch of other studies. We know that this kind of training reduces visceral fat, which is huge for metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance and obesity and cardiovascular disease and all the hell that follows all of that. Mm.